church name is Sanko. My civil name is Sam, and I go by that because my family screwed everything up to begin with, and <laughs> we're not going to try and correct it now. But as a child, I used to read about the saints, and the saints gave wonderful examples of how they loved Jesus, and how their lives were dedicated to sharing Jesus with others. And, and so, we don't worship them. We have a devotion to them. Uh, probably the queen of all saints is Mary, the mother, uh, of, the mother of Jesus, the mother of God, the mother of the church. And as, uh, as the uh, Magnificat says in, uh, in Luke, here's Luke, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> um, that being proclaimed blessed by all angels. And so we do have a great devotion to them. Um, and because we see her as our heavenly mother, because Jesus gave her to us from the cross. When she said, when he said to his mother, Behold your son, and then to her, to John, behold your mother. So that's our devotion uh, to the saints. I think sometimes I remember when I went to college, I went to a little liberal arts college in central Pennsylvania, and I was accused of being an idolater of worship. <laughs> because I had a miraculous medal around my head. And of course, that caused me to go home that summer and find out what we really do with our saints. And, um, and it just went to be more, more open to how rich our, our understanding of that great cloud of witnesses that not only pray with us, before us, and encourage us to be faithful in running the race. They've already won the crown of, of glory. And we're still running. And for some of us, it's rougher to run than <laughs> So that's one. The second one, I think, that gets uh, a little uh, uh, confusing, even for Roman Catholics, is when we say the Holy Father, the Pope, is infallible. It's important to realize he is only infallible in matters of faith and morals. So, when the Holy Father said, he happened to like the translation of the last line of the Our Father in French. That was not an infallible statement that he was going to change the Our Father for all Catholics. Although if you look at the news, you think that that was, you know, his, his effort. The Pope, like any bishop, can have an opinion. And especially at this time, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has a lot of opinions. And he's freely sharing it. Like other political leaders we have today, who share everything they're thinking. You know, I worked with a nun once who said she never had an unspoken thought. I think that's becoming very fashionable. <laughs> when we say that the Pope is infallible in matters of faith and morals, that's also not waking up one morning and saying, you know, I think we're going to do this. The process of making a dogma within the Catholic Church takes centuries, takes scholarship, and takes history. You have to look at when this first belief was first embraced, enunciated, recorded, and, and taught. And so really, in matters of faith and morals, the Holy Father has only spoken three times in Palestine. One was the dogma of infallibility in matters of faith.